Good morning, quite a big day. I'm gonna be doing the uh, chili fermentations today. So I've just been getting out the, uh, the crop for the year and I'm working out what I'm gonna do with it. So by the look of it, we are gonna take this big bag of Trinidad Scorpions and we're gonna break that down into four different sources. So quarter each. Uh, the red habanero is about the same size. So again, we'll have four different sources there. Orange hags, um, I'm gonna just do two sources. Uh, I've got the paper lanterns, which I'm gonna do two of. Gucci coatlers, really into the super hots here, two of. And the reapers, which are gonna be amazing, but obviously they're the super hot, so I can split that small amount into four. I've got Peruvian purples, which you may remember were the most glorious plant, but didn't actually get off an awful lot. I'm gonna do one of the Peruvian purples. And I had a couple of really small crops. So this is T-Pan, very small. And these are the Prairie Fire, very small. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate both of those into one. Um, bits and bobs I've got left over. The Cherry Bombs, um, you stuff those and you use them separately. The Sweet Bananas, they're, um, uh, they're a very mild chilli. Uh, they've got no flavour at all, more like a pepper. And the Poblanos, as you know, are not really uh, uh, a strong chili at all. So I'm going to keep those back. I always keep a little bag of um, odds and sods because you never know when that will come in handy. So the drill for today is these are all frozen at the moment, so it's going to take a while to defrost them, uh, to chop out the middles, get them all nice and presentable, um, and then I'll be going through the whole fermentation process. So it should be quite a long day, but quite a good one. I'll get back to you shortly. Cheers. Right, so I'm just starting to defrost the chilies. You can just do this at room temperature. They're only small, um, but it will take a little while. So I've got a bit of time to play with. Um, so in the meantime, I'm gonna move on with a bulk ingredient. So I like to put garlic in my sauces. I think it gives it a really nice edge. And likewise, um, onions just provide a little more volume um, and a little more flavor. Um, I've got some other flavors I'm gonna put in there. So I've got some fruits, uh, some frozen fruit and stuff I'm gonna put in there as well, just to mix it all up. But as you can see, peeling this lot and getting this ready is gonna take some time. Hopefully that'll give, um, that'll give those red habs a chance to defrost. Moving along a bit now, I've done about half of the garlic and half of the onions just to uh, get me going. Um, so I just wanna talk briefly about how to handle chilies when you're chopping them. Um, comes from very, very bitter experience. There's a few things that you need, they're absolute musts. So the first one is gloves. Make sure you've got gloves under all circumstances because this stuff will go on your fingers um, and you will inadvertently uh, end up putting chili juice everywhere, which is a nightmare, a bit bad. Um, next thing you want, it's a bit of kitchen roll, but at some point, even when you've got the gloves on, you might wipe your eyes or your face. I've done that many times and that's bloody agony. So keep something you can use as a proxy. Now, I'm watching um, uh, an old drama called Edge of Darkness when I'm watching this because it's great. And again, if you're gonna touch anything with these chilli gloves on, make sure you cover it up or else when you come back to the right control later, you are gonna be getting chilli all over your fingers in your eyes and uh, it will be very bad. So this is what we're looking at. Uh, I'll just take one of them here. All we're looking to do Take the top off, get the seeds out, throw the carcass in there, and then put the uh, the seed the, the seedless body in there. So hopefully I'll knock those out. This is my red habaneros, and I'm looking to do four sets of those. So all good. Cheers. Here we are then. I've done all the red habaneros, so that's the whole bag of them. Um, so we've got the skins here. Um, what you'll see is you'll see the odd seed in amongst all this, but to be honest, it's not gonna make a blind bit of difference in the, in the long run. Kind of straighten it all out anyway. Um, these are the seeds and the stalks. So this is all the stuff you're getting rid of, all the bits you don't particularly want in there. Seeds are obviously the hottest part of the plant. Um, just to remind ourselves, we've got the garlic, the flavor, and the onion, which is really for bulk, if I'm being honest. Um, just another top tip when you're doing your chilies, if you are going to drink anything, so I've just made myself a lovely cup of tea, get yourself a straw, because if you've got your gloves on and you're covered in chilli, you you're going to put all that kind of chilli poison all over your cup and it will come out and uh, bite by surprise later. So uh, next up, we'll be filling 
the fermentation pots. Right, I've got the fermentation jars out. Uh, these are quite big, these are two litre jars, so I've kind of overestimated the number of jars I'd need, but that's no problem because I've got plenty of chilies. So I'm just doing the two jars here, and I'm just going to show you basically what I've done. So at the bottom there, you can see the layer of the chilies. Um, there is then, uh, you'll just see it tucked in there, a layer of lovely garlic. And quite obviously, we've got onion in there. And then just to give these a little bit more of a kick, just some frozen summer fruits, just to make it a little fruity and a little more interesting. So I've got about enough now just to top these off. So I'm just gonna spread what's left between the two jars. Do, 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 do. And that looks just about right. I'm gonna stick in a couple of onion, a couple of couple of onion bits just to bulk this up. Yeah, that looks good. I want an air gap at the top of the jars for the fermentation, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna call that um, done for now. So I'm going to move on to doing the brine and setting the fermentation process in, in process. I'm going to talk about brine for a bit. So this is how I'm making out the brine. So I've got these bottles of uh, food grade distilled water. So these are one and a half litres. So in a measuring jug, you probably can't see that, but it does say one and a half litres, which is probably going to be enough for the two of those, I'd imagine. Um, the salt content, <clears throat> as I worked it all out last year, we want 44 grams per litre, so that's 66 per litre and a half. So that's normal table salt, and that's enough for uh, a litre and a half, which is this mixture. So we can stick that in there. That'll be salt and brining. Give it a good. Dissolve, so I'll give that a minute or two stirring if you don't need to see. But this is going to be the brine that's going to be the catalyst for the fermentation. Right, here we are back on the other side now. We've got our brine made up. Just a quick word, cleanliness. So what I haven't spoken to you about is how important it is to keep everything bacteria free. So these have all been sterilised. Um, I'm using these little glass uh, thingies, uh, can't really call them little pot things. Um, these have all been sterilized, as have all the lids and all the other parts of the stuff that's gonna be in contact with the food. You don't wanna get any gribblies in there, sort of uh, uh, bacteria and all that kind of stuff, so keeping this sterile is really, really important. Right, so I've just done one as a tester, and I was just gonna fill this one up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put an extra bit of onion in here so it's going to help keep things down so what we want to do here is make sure everything's covered up and I'm not sure if I'm going to have quite enough brine I'll keep my fingers crossed oh who knows who knows who knows uh, maybe we'll get away with it yeah maybe just a little bit short I can just top it up um, and then with this sterilized lid thing what we want to do is we want to make sure that there's nothing on the surface here because if anything goes to the surface and it's in contact with the air, there's a chance it'll get mould. So what we want to do is use one of these to push everything down as far as we can. Now you can see there's a couple of little chilli bits that got to the top, but mainly we're just about there. What that's also going to do is I'm creating, as you can see, the water level. There's an air gap at the top and that's really important for this little fella. So I think I spoke about it before. So this is our fermentation valve. The way this works is the gases that are produced by the ferment will go up through this little hole. They'll go up into this valve and the valve's got three pieces. I'll do it one-handed. Okay, that's got a little lid. It's got teeny tiny holes in it for letting the gas out. It's got a pipe that runs up from the actual jar to the top, just a straight pipe. And then it's got this clever little thing, which is a lid with, I hope you can see that, those little slats for air. So what we're gonna do is drop that in there. I'm gonna fill it with distilled water to just over the halfway point, put the lid back on it. And then what will happen during the fermentation process is the gases will be expelled 
the gases will be in a little space. They'll be expelled up into this chamber. The gases will then cause this cap to rise and it will cause the gas bubbles to escape out of these uh, little slats at the bottom and they'll dissipate out the top of the fermentation machine, which means it's, it's getting rid of all of the, all of the um, air's going and it's just gonna be getting rid of all those gases and stuff. So that should, in theory, be a completely sterile area. There shouldn't be any reason why even these little bits that have got to the top will get any bacteria or anything on them. But what we do is we'll do a daily check of them just to make sure and we can adjust things as need be if we need to. So, a lovely Peter. Here's one I did just a little while ago. So you can see everything's in there, it's all good. And as this begins to come alive, it'll start bubbling. We've got the air gap at the top. You can see the ramekin, that was the word I was looking for. The ramekin's in there with just about everything pushed down to the ground. We've got our air gap and then we've got our valve with the water in it. So I'm gonna crack on with that and we'll see how we go. Here we are, I've um, done eight of the ferments so far i've run out of fruit and veg so uh, i'm gonna have to finish them off on another day but just to show you sort of the progression so this was the uh, the first one i did which was the uh uh the red habaneros with the summer fruits you can see them all floating around and with everything you ever do like this uh you occasionally refine the process as you go through so that's exactly what's happened here so these as i say this is the lovely red habanero with the uh, the summer fruits, which is all cool. Uh, and then moving right along, we've now got a whole bunch of the Trinidad scorpions. Um, these are with the uh, the raspberry. So just getting the, the mix right, as you can see it's a bit of a jumble here. So what I've done here is I've put the smallest stuff at the bottom. So that's the fruit. Then the actual chilies themselves and a nice layer of garlic, and then a bunch of onion at the top to uh, kind of preserve the top and stop all of this goodness rising from the top. That bit, a little bit of onion won't make, it, make, won't make a blind spot difference because it'll all be air sealed, so that's cool. Moving on now, we come on to the real super heavies. So what we got here is um, we got a layer of raspberries again, and then here we've got the Carolina Reapers. Um, now I've spread these out over four ferments because as you're well aware, these, each one of these is like two million on the Scoville. This is going to be absolutely like murder sauce, it'll be lovely. Um, so then you can see garlic in there as well, and then just a load of onion for bulk, that's all cool. And then just to mix it up a little bit with this one, this is the Carolina Reapers again. This is using the summer fruits mix, garlic, and then in here I've used a mixture of normal red peppers and sweet peppers. They look like kind of a tongue shaped sweet pepper um, just to change change the taste again change your texture and make it a little different so there you go we have eight of our ferments you can see the valves uh, as i said the valves will lift when that gas comes up uh, and the bubbles will come out Whee! and all get dissipated which is great they're all sealed so that i've been really really strict with the cleanliness everything's been well washed and sterilized there's all distilled water as i say like the, the, the food grade distilled water so i'm going to put those uh up into the greenhouse funny enough i'm going to put them somewhere dark in the greenhouse where they're out of the way but it'll be freezing cold up there um, i've still got a whole bunch of others probably about the same amount to do again but i've run out of as i say uh, onions and peppers and all that kind of good stuff underestimated the amount i'd need so i'll come back to that another day um make another lot so I'm going to date these as well, just so I know how long I've laid them down for. But this is basically it. These will be my lovely ferment. Um, usually I lay them down for a couple of weeks. I might see how I go with these. I'm just going to see how they react. I could go longer, I could go shorter, seeing as how we get on for time. Right, that's it for now. Catch you in a bit.